All right, everybody, so that's by the numbers. Welcome back. Today, I wanted to do a quick update here on Lifecycle Holdings, ticker symbol L-I-C-Y, listed here on the New York Stock Exchange, but maybe not for long. And basically, what we're seeing is we're seeing a company that absolutely cratered down. Now, I appreciate the fact I have not looked at this one in a while. However, at the time, I just went back. I rewatched the video I posted. The video was posted, um, where the hell am I? February, March, April. So it was like there. On the 4th, April 4th, right there. So you can see the top left of the screen, the O, the H, the L, the C. That's the open, the high, the low, the close. And uh, you can see it closed at 5.59. And that's when I posted the video. It was um, a little after market hours on that day. And basically what I said was, right, if we back up from before that point, as you see, I basically said overall that the company, like at that point, just started bringing in a couple of million dollars. And, you know, essentially out of the gate, it was just overpriced. At the time, when we looked at 559, it was um, just shy of a billion dollar market cap, right? Which means doubling it up here at around $10 means that the company IPO'd at roughly $2 billion valuation. The problem is they just weren't making any money. And at the same time, apparently they were bleeding like an animal. And I mentioned, of course, you know, basic economics and business that, uh, in my opinion, you can't really sustain a business if you're spending seven, eight, ten dollars to make one dollar and also struggling to make that dollar, you know, in the meantime. So it, it really seemed like it needed much more time. And even based on the projections at the current levels of 559, again, market cap, I think, was like 950 million right around there. So let's just call it a billion. And uh, at the time, again, they were bringing in like four million a quarter right so the company was making like 15 million dollars for the year but it you know on paper it was worth a billion dollars so yeah that's why i said chances are it'll most likely stay inside of this wedge for at least like the next two to three quarters and i even circled out like the estimates of when roughly these earnings reports were going to be and this is why i always say you have to do your own due diligence and you have to keep an eye on your stocks Okay, not not everything is just inevitably going to go higher no matter what. So you can just blindly buy and just keep, you know, going on about your day. No, this is this is again, this is money you work hard for. You know, you, you put in a lot of time, a lot of hours, spend time away from home, your family, right to earn this money. And now you just kind of blindly throw it like it's not worth it. You understand what I'm saying? It's not worth it. If you want to take a shot on something smaller, like I said, there's a lot of cheaper stocks out there that we've looked at stocks like Fubo, Soundhound, Stem, right? These stocks are all a couple of dollars a share, but also at the same time, in my opinion, they're not are currently at risk of any potential reverse stock split. They're generating decent money and and they're actually you know considered fair valued or undervalued in my opinion when looking at some of the numbers you know what i'm saying so these are companies that are slowly growing their clientele they're making tens of millions hundreds of millions they're, they're projecting to continue to grow the problem with life cycle was they didn't prove themselves to us yet even when we looked at it back in april and that's why i said even looking at the forecast at the time forecasts were significantly higher than where they are now i'm sure but you know, the company was projecting to jump up to like 15 million the quarter after we looked at them. And then the next quarter, they, they were jumping to like 22 and then like 41, right? So even at those levels, I said that it could be, you know, potentially viewed as like fair valued at around that five, six dollar level. And it could just kind of hang out. But if they started chunking up the revenue and coming close or beating those estimates of 15, 20, 40 million, then it would have been one of those earnings reports that could have been the main catalyst to pop the stock out of this long term wedge that it was in. Right. So that's what I said. I was basically in wait and see mode. I said it was overvalued. It has the potential to continue down into this wedge and drop down. Um, you know, I would consider I th at the time 559. I think I said, like I said, I just want to be honest and just want to relay everything I said in the video. I don't want you to think I don't want you guys to think like, yeah, I'm one of those people. Oh, he only talks good about himself. Like, you know what I'm saying? But I did say here at the time, like if it dipped down, I said I would potentially consider getting into the at the low fours going into this earnings, maybe. 
And as we see, you, you know what I'm saying? That That's what I mean. So you have to keep an eye on what the company reports, any news that comes out on the company. And even as much as I hate the analysts, sometimes at, at least read what they're potentially saying about a company. And it could help, you know, paint a, a little bit of a, a more clearer picture, so to speak, for you moving forward. But you know, when you just look at the numbers here, you can see this was earnings middle of May, right? So this was like five, six weeks after we looked at the at the stock. And you can see big miss. Big miss on the top and bottom lines. So the company not doing what they said they were going to do, right? And this is why I say with these newer companies, especially when they're first starting out, like generating their, their first couple of million and a situation like this, oh, we just did... Uh, 3 million, right? We just missed huge, but next quarter estimates are almost double that at 6.4 million. Okay, let's see what they do. Oh, they've only brought in like 3 million again. All right, they missed by 40%. All right, that's not good. And still the whole time they were losing money to do it, right? So you can see bounced around, boom. Then we come into this next quarter earnings. And that's what I mean. It's just the inconsistencies. And you cannot just have a stagnated business like this especially if you're in this whole like battery ev space and you have all this hype behind you that's what i'm seeing here because as i mentioned with a lot of other stocks too and i'm not trying to bash all the ones that we looked at but we looked at a lot of these little tech stocks that were massively overvalued in in my opinion it seemed like a no-brainer that they were just going to sell off and fall off a cliff and you know four out of five of them did or however many we looked at so this is why also, uh, you know, I kind of appreciate doing this content for you guys as well, because I might talk about a stock that I like personally. I might just, you know, analyze a brand name stock like a Hershey or a Disney, or at the same time, I could look at something like this, which honestly, I wasn't too familiar with Lifecycle. But again, you know, I, I, I know what to look for. I, lo I, I look for certain metrics. I look for trend patterns along the way, and I try to just combine everything together and just try to just help you guys and, and try to potentially point you in the right direction. But again, we know regardless of uh, how much analysis we do, anything can happen here in the markets. Uh, we think something's undervalued, it, you know, it, it goes lower, something's overinflated, but they keep taking it higher. So, you know, we never really know what's going to happen. But basically, getting back to life cycle here, we can see in consistencies. Now, apparently as of last quarter, estimates dropped to sub 3 million look at that 2.79 million so that's what i mean there it seems like they're losing faith here in this stock company happens to come out and post 4.7 million coming in 68 percent above analyst expectations look at the eps though losing basically triple what wall street expected and that's the recipe for disaster. This is what I always say. When companies are bleeding too much, you can't spend three, four, five dollars to make a dollar. It it inevitably leads to market sell-off, unless of course your revenue somehow starts chunking in like crazy. But usually for the most part, it leads to consistent market sell-off. Stock price consistently goes lower. Now you have a situation where the stock is now trading at less than a dollar. Right. So they already got that warning from the New York Stock Exchange. And now they have to get their earnings, uh, their uh, share price back up to above a dollar for uh, like 30 consecutive days, I think it is, or the, or the average average price over the last couple of months. But basically what I'm getting at is this is why with a situation like this. And again, I appreciate the fact you guys were, were hyped about it and it still might be. But this is why with a, with a lot of these situations, I, I am in wait and see mode, especially with these smaller, newer stocks. Let them prove it to you. Let them prove it to you, right? And think about this. We looked at it back here and it was uh, 559. And I said, you know, we could stay down here. And, and if we stay in the wedge, look, now we're at like $3. And let's just say hypothetically, they got that facility built and they actually started chunking up revenue and they pop out here and they pop up to like, five and a half six dollars yeah you weren't involved the last eight nine months since we last looked at it but the company has now proven itself it's on track it's showing the growth you know and and if this pattern played out and then it popped out to six yeah now it's at six we originally looked at it at 559 but remember at 559 
it, you you technically would have had much much less conviction much much less confidence because the company again as we said and apparently it came to fruition but overall just overvalued at that point and hasn't proven themselves in their actual business and you see they consistently kept missing earnings after we looked at it so you know what I mean? It, that's why it, it turned out, we turned out to be correct with that wait and see approach. But anyway, long story short, even if you didn't own it this whole time, again, at least now you can buy in basically the same, maybe a little bit higher than where it was from when we first looked at it. But again, at this point, we said, excuse me, they said that they were going to be 20, 40, 50 million a quarter now at this point, right? You got to keep that in mind as well. So again, yeah, you missed the dip and the low price and you could have got in earlier. However, you buying at this price of $6 with the, with the, uh, with the better numbers that they were forecasting, right? Now you know, well, not know, of course, nothing's guaranteed, but now you have much, much higher conviction. You have much, much higher confidence going in at $6 saying no. All this company has to keep doing is doing what it's doing. You know what I'm saying? And by the end of the year, maybe I can see like seven fifty eight dollars and I can be up a good like 50, 60 percent. I think if, if they keep doing what they're doing and I'm going to keep an eye on it, but I, I think if they keep doing what they're doing, then, you know, yeah, we can easily see 10, 12 dollars, you know, inside of the next 12 to 24 months. It's going to turn out to be a phenomenal hold. And if I want to sell at that point for a great gain, I'm only going to pay, you know, long term cap gains and not short term cap. You know what I'm saying? That's why sometimes I feel like, in my opinion, anyway, significantly easier to invest for the longer term as opposed to, you know, trying to trade double up your money uh, every day or every week for yourself. Because if you can kind of quote unquote know and, and what you can be have high conviction in, if you can kind of see what, well, what's going to happen inside of the next 12 to 24 months, it's uh, not only is it more of a confident investment, but again, you're paying much, much less on capital gains tax. And with situations like that, you would consider potentially investing more than you would have on something like a life cycle. But getting back to the situation at hand, we have the beat here and the stock completely falls off a cliff. I pull up this article here from uh, January 2nd. So this was about five, six weeks ago. And we can see life cycle holdings, financially troubled, the company has been placed on notice for non-compliance with listing standards of the New York Stock Exchange. A written notice from the New York Stock Exchange was issued after the average closing price of life cycle stock fell below $1 over a consecutive 30-day trading period. In response, life cycle, listen to this, in response, life cycle, quote, has advised the New York Stock Exchange of its intention to cure the deficiency and is considering all available options in this regard. In my opinion, that means reverse stock split, right? Because now we're going to further go down that this uh, Rochester facility, Rochester hub here, being halted, and it's going to cost twice as much. And now supposedly there's class action lawsuits coming in on life cycle. So you know, chances are, in my opinion, it's probably going to get worse before it gets better. And because the actual business itself cannot uh, really come out with any positive catalyst that I see, uh, you know, they, they probably can't convincingly beat earnings and, and have revenue pumped up, right, to, to, to hype the stock back up so that the value increases on its own organically. That's why I'm saying, in my opinion, I am pretty confident that that statement right there may lead to a reverse stock split in the near future life cycle stock plummeted to all-time lows over the past two months following october 23rd announcement that the construction on the rochester hub was being halted due to a doubling of the project cost initial price tag 485 million rose to 560 over the summer now is ballooned between 850 and a billion dollars the company said now, imagine, imagine I told you that. Imagine we were going into business together, you and my financial backer, and I said, yeah, listen, I want to build this facility. It should cost about $400 million. And you said, all right, you know, let's start breaking ground. Let's get it going. And then all of a sudden I say, yeah, listen, uh, I need $900 million. Chances are you'd probably be upset, okay? And that's what's going on here with the shareholders. Apparently filing a class action lawsuit here against the company 
First listed on the New York Stock Exchange in November of 2020, life cycles reached a high water mark of 1384. Several national firms have joined the class action lawsuit by investors who allege company management made misleading statements regarding construction of the Rochester hub and the company's operations. That's it. In my opinion, it might actually be done. It might actually be done. Because again, uh, you know, when, when they first said, what was the, the pump here? Okay. So they pumped it up from 485 to 560 million. Okay. So, so just, so just try to put yourself in that situation, right? Imagine again, imagine you were my financial backer. I was running things and I said, Hey, listen, 485 million. You said, all right, do it. Then I come back to you, right? And we could make the argument, hey, listen, you know, the environment's rough. This happened, that happened. Prices are up, hyperinflation. You know, now it's going to be 560. Obviously, initially, you would be upset. But also, you would understand, obviously, why the costs went up. And it would be no problem. But now if I come back to you and say, oh, yeah, listen, we were way off. I need a billion. Now we have an issue. That's what I'm saying. Now we have an issue. That's why with this uh, class action lawsuit coming out, I can understand and appreciate where they're coming from. Because that, that, that was a gross miscalculation to go from sub half a billion to potentially a billion. So I understand why investors are upset. I, again, this is just my opinion. I'm not an attorney, but in my opinion, I actually think they have a strong case. And uh, with consistent negative news coming out, your stock will consistently fall off a cliff and drop down. So now we have a company, again, just making a couple of million dollars here. We come back, yeah, like three, four million. That's what I mean. The company's still making like 12, 15 million for the year. We still have a market cap of 82 million. So maybe you can say now it's like fair valued. But again, as I mentioned, now they're potentially about to lose listing on the New York Stock Exchange. So that's why I'm saying, in my opinion, uh, it does sound like a reverse stock split may be imminent and things may only get worse for life cycle holdings, which is why, again, when I originally looked at it and... Um, you know, I basically said I would, again, I would be in wait and see mode. I would, I would let the company prove itself to us. Show, show me that growth you were, you were projecting, right? Because they were doing like five, seven million at the time. And then all of a sudden it was going to be 15 and then 22 million, you know? So, oh, okay. All right. Sh go ahead. Show it to me. Go ahead. Show it to me. Make me a believer. And when you, if you actually showed that to me, and that's what I mean. Then I could have potentially made an update video if someone brought it to my attention because we're, we're looking at a lot of stocks. So I'm going to be honest. Sometimes I look at these stocks in these videos and I may forget about them. My apologies if you have a position. I'm not, it's nothing against you personally. I'm not trying to hate on your stock. But um, that's why, again, like if they started bringing in all of a sudden they were reporting like 30, 40 million throughout these quarters here that we were initially waiting for, then I can, you know, do an update video and say, hey, listen, you know, I, I may still say, hey, it's a little overvalued in the, in the numbers, but hey, the company's growing, you know, like crazy revenues chunking up now by tens of millions. Like th this may be one that really starts to grow over time. Like we may want to consider getting in. I, you know, I'm an honest guy. I would have been honest about it. But of course, unfortunately, that is the opposite type of storyline that we're getting here from Lifecycle. The company apparently dealing with a lot of big negatives here. And that is why, again, just because these companies are uh, a new tech stock coming out, or again, like, oh, this battery company, or oh, this is a new EV stock that's going public. Like, you work too hard for your money. And basically what I'm seeing, in my opinion, is once you get to Wall Street, you're just handed hundreds of millions and billions of dollars. So these people have their money. They technically don't need your money, right? So that's why, in my opinion, if you are going to become a shareholder of a company and invest into that company, it should be a company that earned its stripes and actually deserves that capital from you. Not just, not just some stock that hit the tape today.
You know what I'm saying? That's why I always say, in my opinion, work smarter, not harder. Be patient sometimes. It pays off to be patient. And I just want to say, listen, anyone who's down big right now, obviously from the time we looked at the video, you're down like 90% if you're still holding on. Uh, I First of all, again, this is why we have to keep an eye on our news and our numbers because if the company came out and made those announcements here along the way and you saw it chunking down and didn't get out, I mean, with all due respect, you know, the, the, this is, uh, you know, it's, it's going to come with more experience. But, you know, when you hear things like that, yeah, you may want to just take the loss and move on. But, uh, of course, it's all hindsight. But also, again, this, this is why I'm saying, um, first of all, don't beat yourself up because everyone you talk to probably has a position that's down 90 plus percent. Okay. So don't beat yourself up. We've all been there. And I just really hope that anyone who's still in, I just hope that this is a little extra money that you have, right? I hope this isn't like a sizable position that you went in heavy on because, uh, you know, it's, it's, it really wasn't that type of company to begin with. But um, I, I, ju I just really hope that moving forward, yeah, you have to learn from these mistakes. You can't just dwell on them. You can't beat yourself up. Oh man, I screwed up. I lost so much. No, no, stop that. You have to know why you lost so much, why it didn't work out, and what not to look for next time, what to avoid next time. And I'm telling you, it's, it, it really sucks and it's a rocky road. I'm not going to lie to you, but I'm telling you, you, you keep learning from those experiences and consistently working smarter, you won't have to work harder. And you will probably, in my opinion, find yourself in a much better position several years down the road. Okay, I talk too much. I'm going to end it there. Once again, stocks by the numbers. Thanks for stopping by. Questions, comments, or concerns, drop it down in the comment section. Uh, thumbs up algorithm helps me get more eyes on the channel. And of course, subscribe to the channel. That's our handshake agreement. That is how you help me help you. But more importantly, moving forward, like I always say, I understand markets are rocky and volatile and very uncertain. So I want to wish all of you success. I hope everyone makes a couple of dollars. Thanks for stopping by. Have a good day.